Hey guys, welcome back to the third episode of the Q back to the third episode of the Kubernetes series that we are covering right now. So today we are going to talk about the basics of the Kubernetes framework. So in the previous video, we talked about Docker and got to know of the concepts and did some hands-on for creating a container image. We also run a sample uh, Hello World application on top of it. Now let's talk about Kubernetes. So to start with the basics, what exactly is Kubernetes? On a high level or a single sentence, we can describe it as it's an open source platform for container orchestration. Now, you'll hear this word orchestration a lot when we talk about Kubernetes. So what exactly is it? So by the word orchestration, we actually mean the Kubernetes framework can help us to manage containerized workloads and services in an organized way. Now, why I'm going to, why I'm saying like it's managing in an organized way, that's what we are going to discuss in the next part, describing why it's actually needed. Oh, and by the way, if you are not familiar with Docker, I would highly recommend you to consider the earlier video that I did to cover the basics of Docker. So you can click on the link of uh, like uh, on the top right corner of this video to get that directly. That will save you some time. Okay, back to Kubernetes. So why do we need this framework? Because I can host the container using Docker itself. Then why we need an additional layer of framework on top of that uh, Docker framework itself? So I'll mention about uh, the five basic use cases that will clear the doubts and it will eventually say why exactly do we need Kubernetes in a real application world scenario. So the point one is challenges on hosting containers on physical or virtual machines. So if you follow my last video, we did the same thing. So we created a virtual machine and we created the containers on top of those virtual machines by inst after installing this uh, Docker uh, runtime. Now, let's say you have a similar setup. You have a containerized application image and you are hosting on top of a physical or virtual machine. And let's say the machine got crashed. So your, your app also as it's hosted within that, that will also crash with it. So that's one problem. Secondly, inter-container connectivity. So how do the containers who talk to each other? They don't have a dedicated IP address assigned to them, right? So the communication between these containers are tough. So you need to rely on host machines IP and it will be difficult if you have a multi cluster Docker images lying out there. It will be difficult to communicate between multiple physical host or virtual host and have a channel between a container hosted on one hardware and connecting to the container hosted down another hardware. So that's a challenge. Third, deployment strategy. So how will the deployment work if I try to deploy one single application hosted on multiple container distributed among multiple host machines? I mean, you can manage it, but you have to be, to be very frank, there are a lot of headaches. So you have to write some script. You have to make sure what are the hosts that where we are hosting the Docker, Docker container framework. You have to gather the details and okay, if I have one container here, deploy one there. So it's a lot of headache that you have to manually manage. You can do it via scripts. I'm not saying you can't, but you have a lot of headaches. Point four, let's say I want to scale up the container count depending on the user access volume. So for example, I have an application and as of now, it's capable of handling 100 users. So now there's a peak in the user base. Now let's say there are 200 users trying to access that application. So eventually your application which will crash, right? So for that, you need scaling to be in place. You need to make sure that the replica of that same container is getting spawned up automatically to serve my traffic, user traffic. So you cannot do that. You can, again, you have to do that via script. So you have to monitor how many users are connectly, currently connecting to my container. Okay, if it is greater than 100, then spin up another container that will host the same application. So there, again, there are a lot of headaches. Now, even if we consider that, that's 0.5, even if you consider scaling, how we are going to make sure that all the users, they are connecting to 
the second container so there is a distribution need that we have among the containers or the load balancing again we can do that using the basic docker but again you have to take help from third party solutions so as we see there are a lot of challenges if we just directly go with the standalone docker container runtime and host our application on top of that so to the rescue who can take all the pain away and there is our orchestration frameworks so first there is kubernetes similarly there are docker swarm and dcos those three frameworks that we are talking about work the same way and there are other frameworks like this also so for example from red hat we have uh, openshift that's again the kubernetes framework but that's uh, currently managed and maintained by red hat and specifically in this tutorial we are just going to talk about kubernetes so some basic information about kubernetes so it's created by google and it's created using the golang language which is again from google now google donated it to cncf by cncf i mean it's cloud native computing foundation and now cncf manages that it, it takes care of all the new releases that kubernetes framework has so even if you look for a kubernetes certification now you will see the cka ckad both of these certifications you have to go to cncf portal to get registered that's all the basics let's move on to what exactly we are going to cover in this tutorial so we are going to talk about mainly four things that we must know when we talk about kubernetes that is we need to know about pods we need to know about replica sets deployments and services if you know these four services from a beginner perspective you should be good you should be able to host your applications you can have like you can manage scaling you can have you can do deployments you could expose your application to outer world or maybe your inner network layer so okay. let's cover okay. one by we one let's move on let's to the pods at first things that we really need to keep in our mind while working on the kubernetes technology so all the configurations that are applied on kubernetes clusters are written in yaml in case if you're already familiar with yaml it would be great if not i'll try to do my best to go easier on the conventions and you should be able to understand if you follow the tutorial now all of the kubernetes objects that we create uh, such as pods deployments replica sets etc etc they follow four major keys in the yaml file api version kind metadata and spec now this api version is dependent on the kind now in kind we specify what kind of object that we are going to create so for example first we are trying to create a pod right so the kind should be pod now depending on the ki kind we have to understand what should be the api version so they are kind of like a kubernetes defined api version for all the objects i know it's not easier to get it um, browsing different sites so for the basic parts even i have tried to put the different kinds and their corresponding api version so for example for pod it will be always v1 now the third part is metadata where we provide the details of that specific kind so for example if you are trying to create a pod and in metadata we have to define what is the name of that pod or what are the different tags or labels that we want to assign to that pod and in spec that means the object specification so pod specification so in order to have a pod running we need to have the containers within it right so if there are containers we have to make sure that we define or we describe what should be the container image and that goes in specs though it's one of the key features or entities that we are going to define on specs there are others now let's talk about or let's actually go hands on and we are going to create a pod so this file that we are going to write the yaml file for creating pods we are going to just write it now and we are going to deploy it on the cluster that we have the lab i have the cluster ready here so i will just get into the master node 
and just to check I'll see what are the nodes that has been added here so we do have a worker one node defined and now we are going to create a pod configuration file that is pod.yaml so let me create it here as I mentioned so we are going to have four key things API version then it will be kind then it will be metadata then spec now kind we know that we are going to create pod so kind is pod and as I mentioned here pod should have API version of v1 so I'll just define v1 here now in metadata I'll name the pod so for example I'll name it as uh, let's say my web server and here I will say like labels and it will be app is equal to web for example why we are using labels here we will come to that part later labels are mainly used so that we can refer it somewhere else so think of it like a tag so the tag key is app and the tag value is web so in spec I mentioned earlier right so here we are just going to define all the container properties so I will just write containers and why I am writing containers and not container here is we can have one container within one pod or multiple containers within a pod it depends right so for our example in this demo we are just going to have a one-to-one -one mapping one container and one pod so in containers we have to specify what the name it should be now let's say I want to put it like web server the name of the container should be web server and now I should provide the image let's say I'll take engines for an example and then I have to specify what are the ports that this engines server should expose at say 80 think yeah this should be fine I'll just copy this this is in my local system by the way I'll just copy this that's why and I'll go to my Kubernetes cluster mkdir test or I'll like demo cons I'll just paste it here now we have this pod.yaml file so this file will help us to create a pod within the kubernetes cluster right how we are going to apply that so we are going to say kubectl apply minus f for file pod.yaml and it says pod my web server that has been created now in metadata you see that we specified the pod name should be my web server so that's why it's showing us pod my web server that has been created now how do I check whether this pod is running within the cluster or not simple kubectl get pods and I do see my web server is currently doing okay it has given an error and it's running right now so maybe there was some temporary glitch for my network connectivity it was not able to pull the nginx image since it has been able to pull successfully now my pod is running now since we have a working pod right now a um, couple of points to keep in mind here we had created uh, one pod and within which we have only defined one container if we want to have a 2 is to 1 or n is to 1 ratio with containers and pods we can have that defined here so what we have to do is we have to just replicate the same thing here so here if I want to have another container within the same pod I'll just name it like web server 2 or something define the image maybe Debian for example 
ports if we want to define anything similar to that like that now if we just modify the file that port.yaml that we had created earlier here we can do the same thing and we can just do an apply but if you are planning to add a new container to an existing pod we won't be able to do that because it restricts us to do so so what we have to do is we have to delete that existing pod and then we have to recreate that so how we are going to delete the pod so there are two ways one is kubectl delete the file that you had provided to apply the same file if you just hit enter it will delete that or if you want to do it from command line you can just do kubectl delete pod then the pod name and it says my pod my web server is deleted now we created one pod and uh, here we can gather some more details about it so kubectl get pods it gives you the basic information so the name of the pod and everything but we are not able to see like uh, in which actual worker or node the pod is running for that we can just do minus o wide and it will give us all the details so it says like this is the name of my pod status is running the age ip address of the pod which worker node or the node where this is currently hosted on and we do see that it's currently one by one so it has only one copy now let's say in production or in enterprise environment we do not create a pod that is singular so we try to create multiple pods so for that what we do is we create a replica set out of it and how do we do that let's write a configuration file so replica set dot yaml as i mentioned earlier we have four key things to remember so that is api version then we have to do kind metadata spec now what we are trying to do we are trying to create a replica set replica set means is how many replicas you want to create of your pod so i want to say like i want to have five replicas two replicas of my pod it will do that task for you so here it will be replica set and also please make sure that we are maintaining this uh, convention because all the caps and small letters that we have uh, here specified please mention that because it's case sensitive so for replica set we have to figure out what exactly is the api version so if i go back to my reference i can see like ex extensions slash v1 beta 1 so i'll just go here i'll just paste it metadata name of the replica set so let's name it as sorry it should not be an array name should be like uh, my app replica set let's set a label to it let's say app is my app now let's go to spec so for replica set there are three major things that we have to remember within the spec configuration file one is the number of replicas another is a template and the last one is selector let's define each of these replicas how many replicas do we want to maintain for that specific pod let's take an example let's do two replicas so we will just write two here okay template now when we talk about template like the meaning is when we are trying to create a replica set it has to follow a template and that template has to be coming from the pod so what we can do is we can go back to the pod configuration and we can just inherit the same thing there in template we are going to go to pod and from metadata we are going to copy everything so just copy it 
and we are just going to paste it here now here we have to fix that alignment this spec is not replica set spec this, this spec is coming from the pod spec please keep it in mind this spec is of the replica set spec so it will align with the template containers let's go here and see what we have we have the same convention spec containers name spec containers name and we also have metadata name yeah we are properly aligned now the last part is the selector so in selector we specify the different labels if you remember we specified this label here and we have to specify the same thing here and we just have to give it like match labels and we are just going to copy and paste it here now the question is why exactly we are doing that let's say we have a replica set where we have two pods running now both of your pods or one of your pods gets destroyed maybe due to some errors it's not able to do anything maybe your application is crashing whatever it is whatever reason it is let's say one of which got crashed now what the replica set will do is it will try to again respawn your pod and for that it will go to the selector section and it will select based on the configuration that we have defined here so it will see all the pods or the pod configuration that we have let's match the label of application is equal to web and from where we are getting that we are getting it from the pod metadata details so application is web and we know the metadata of this pod is application web and corresponding spec is this one so it will try to get the configuration from here and it will try to recreate your pod so let's save it let's copy it let's go back to the terminal let's create a rs.yaml kubectl apply minus f rs.yaml and it is giving us an error unable to recognize rs.yaml no matches for kind replica set in version extension beta 1 okay we took the reference from the slide right so let's go back to the slide and it says like extensions v1 beta 1 okay so ideally it should be apps v1 so this is a mistake that i will correct and i will also modify my configuration file and here we have said there are two replicas okay let's apply it says the replica set has been created we should ideally see two pods now so there are two pods right now they're in container creating stage let's wait for it to come up So both of my ports are now running and uh, let's do a small thing here let's go to rs.yaml and we will just change the count from 2 to 4 and let's see whether it scales up to 4 from 2 these two are the old ports that is running for 54 seconds and we see two new containers are currently being created and also if you see one thing uh, we had if I if I go back to the configuration file we specified the replica set name as my app dash replica set and if you go here it will show you 
pod name and what replica set does is it adds a suffix and which is kind of like a random value of strings they append it to the replica set name and name it as a pod because there we did not specify any pod name in the configuration right so it's replica sets responsibility to name the pods now let's go there and see whether it has been created or not all of the four pods are running now there are other ways to also get to know about the replica set itself so kubernetes get rs if we do that we will see that my app replica set it has a desired pod count of four currently there are four pods running and four of them are currently in ready state so far we have covered uh, the pod configuration how to write the yaml files and we have also uh, came to know about the replica set since this video is going long uh, we will cover the deployment and services in the next video thanks everyone for watching this video if you think that this has helped you please feel free to like and subscribe thank you signing off